I'm really honored to be here. Uh, I want to introduce you to some people. Um, this is Lino. He grew up in the, um, the streets of the inner city of Boston, Mattapan and Dorchester. At the age of 14, he was homeless. And by, by the age of 18, he was in jail for attempted homicide. Um, really going places, you know. Um, but a funny thing happened. His cellmate was a guy who read. And he threw Lino a book one day and said, you know, you should try this. Lino had never read a book in his life. And the name of it was The Native Son. And he read his first book. And he read it again. And he read more. And to make a long story short, he uh, graduated from high school in jail. And by the time he was released, he had been admitted to UMass. Now he's a father of two. And he started a nonprofit uh, organization called Urban Achievers. And the whole mission is to sort of swoop in to kids around the age of 13 or 14 when he was homeless and help them take a right turn instead of a left turn. So he, uh, he's one of our bull facers. This is Rachel. Um, she's kind of a badass. She's a roller derby skater. Um, she wins a lot. Um, and she's a big fighter in the rink. Off the rink, her biggest battle has been uh, surviving breast cancer. This is Marcus. He's a bongo drummer. I met him at a party on a roof and was blown away by him. He's from Brazil and decided to uh, focus his life on, on hand drums. And so he went to Berkeley and he majored in it. And now he's been on MTV and has albums and he's just killing it. This is Jeremy Allaire. Um, if anyone's in the high tech world, you may be familiar with him. He um, started a company called Brightco, which has completely exploded. Here are some more. There's Ginny, a break dancer. Steven, uh, an architect. That's Deva. She's literally a rocket scientist helping us travel to Mars at MIT. That's Nate. He's a voodoo priest. That's Dalen, the little six-year-old who captured the hearts of Celtics fans by dancing at Celtics games when he got excited and ended up on the Jumbotron. Um, that's Clancy. He's an actor. <laughs> He's in the Dog Actors Guild. Um, so you may ask, uh, you know, what in the world do these people have in common? It seems like such a random sampling, but um, there are 400 others like them, and they are what we call bull facers. I started it seven years ago, and it's an online magazine. Um, the core of it is to showcase the area's coolest talent and personalities. You don't have to have a million degrees. You don't have to come from the right family or the right neighborhood. You don't have to have a lot of money. We choose people who are excellent at what they do, prince or pauper, plumber or PhD. We choose people who have a spark and a story, and then we showcase them. Once a week, every Tuesday, there's a new story. There's a print feature. There's video. I'll show you some of that a little bit later. There's an insider's guide. Um, so it's all, been, uh, it's all been quite exciting. I, uh, my background is I was, as Laura mentioned, I was a TV producer for the ABC news magazine show called Chronicle for about 15 years. And it was, it was my dream job. I mean, one week it was bargain burritos, and the next week it was the death penalty. So it was the light, the heavy, and everything in between. Um, but after 15 years, uh, I was sort of seeing a few things happen. And one of them was that traditional media was, was changing at warp speed. And um, it was clear that things were never going to be the same uh, after you know, the emergence of the, of the digital world. I had happened to uh, do a lot of freelance work on the side, even though I was a TV producer. And one of the things I got involved with was a site called Daily Candy. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, it was on fire from the beginning. And I thought, this, this is it. This is where everything is going. It is clear. Um, professionally, I sort of had you know, questions about what, what the trajectory would be as a TV producer. I didn't want to be a manager. I, I don't like managing people. I, lo I loved being out in the field. I loved meeting people and learning from people. Um, and this, you know, the, the migration to the digital world seemed like an obvious choice for me. So when I sort of started thinking about how to make this change, I started thinking about the, the body of work that I had produced for the show. And um, there's nothing in common with a burrito chef and you know, somebody who lost a child to homicide, you know. But, but the one common theme um, was that everybody has a story. And even in a half hour show, a lot of times you don't have time to tell it. So for example, you know, if we were doing a story on a, a new restaurant, we would interview predictable characters. We'd interview the chef, we'd interview the owner, we'd interview a happy customer, show some shooting flames coming out of a pan. Um, but the people we would remember is somebody like the dishwasher in the kitchen who was training to be in the Olympics as a rower. And there would never be time for him. Um, you know, there, there was just, that was just a complete sidebar where there'd never be time to tell that story. And I thought, that's the story. That, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create this platform on which you can showcase 
um, talent and, and the next big thing that you wouldn't hear. So about, hear about. Um, and that coupled with the fact that every time I look in the paper, I was reading about the same cast of characters, pro athletes and politicians and anchor people. And I didn't feel as though they were a real true reflection of the richness um, of a community, not just Boston, really any community. I mean, this, this could happen anywhere. Um, so that's why I started. Um, I am now going to sort of toss this to some of our interviews so you can, you can uh, hear a little bit more from some of our people and see a little bit of a sample of the video work that we do. So if you can cue that up, that would be great. Hi, my name is Shay Rose, and I'm a soulful rocker and rapper and music for social change activist. Rock and Rose is kind of like, this is who I am, and rocking who you are in the world, and being like, okay with who you are, like whatever it is, if you have a bald head, if you have an afro, if you have dreadlocks, so. My serious rising got you starstruck, as I struck Betty Davis on this bass line, kick it with me, rock funky with a soulful middle, stop and taste You know, I'm applying for a fellowship to hopefully go to um, Africa or Spain and, and kind of pursue my music for social change. Um, activism because it's something that I can do beyond my age you know certain parts of the music industry it's very like you have to be this age you have to be look this way and that's it and so that um, initiative is, is really um, helps me to expand what I can do with my music outside of making a number one hit or writing a number one hit or a Grammy or whatever so I'm um, applying for a fellowship hopefully I'll get it for a, a long time I was like perfecting my craft and I kind of felt like at one point like this is not enough. So I go in and I get other students to, like, hey, you're a DJ. Do you want to go in and do a DJ clinic for the kids at the Boys and Girls Club? Or if you're a professor, like, do you want to bring your class to this club and perform? So a lot of my work at Berkeley, in addition to being a student there, is really getting um, students, faculty, and staff at Berkeley just fired up about going into the Boston community and just sharing their creativity and their talent with kids who might not necessarily have it. And so writing and performing really keeps me connected to humanity and just like human conditions. Like everybody wants to go out and party sometimes and go to the club and just let go and then everyone has a broken heart so you can write about that and identify with people. So the message that I, ultimately I want to get out is we're here for hopefully a common cause which is to live and just express and do what our time is, you know, do our time here on this earth and leave a legacy behind that's positive. Different pattern. Now you got the introduction to the rose, new rose. Everybody knows a rose is a rose, no matter what you call it. But you can call me Shea Rose for the na 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 na. I got you in my clutches and you're digging on this funk, gonna stop your feeding. Bob your head now, get your soul clapped down. This music is a remedy. Brings joy in the morning and the people that want it. Oh, everybody knows no matter what you call a rose, it's still the rose. I say rock and rose is a feeling. You can flip it how you want, can't put it in the box. Say rock and rose is a feeling. Let your mind run free, be who you want to be. Say rock and rose is a feeling. In the park, on the block, you can drop it like it's hot. Say rock. Rock and Rose is up, is up. She's a star. Um, she, uh, she since won a Boston Music Award. Um, she wrote actually an original piece for us. For We usually come out with something a little bit different for the holidays, and she wrote an original song for us. You can see that on the site. Um, Travis is a second video. Totally different, uh, totally different ball of wax here, you'll see. My name, is my name is Travis Hartano, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I helped run the underground in Boston. Underground, underground is great because, because you know, I'll tell you one thing, sure, sure, I wouldn't work retail, retail anywhere, anywhere else. else. And, you know, and you know, it's, it's one of one the more, the more corporate, corporate shops, shops, but at the, but same, at the same time, time like the owner, owner of Ski Market, ski market underground, underground, comes and pumps on the ramp, ramp, ramp with me, you know, cracks jokes, jokes out. out. So, so, so it's great, you know, you know like, it's, it's the best of both worlds, it's my job, and I still, and I love, still it. love it. I, you know, I, you I love, love having an influence, influence on little, on little kids, kids to come in, in getting, getting them psyched, psyched on skateboarding. That's part of my favorite part of the whole thing. More than anything, it's just the feeling, the feeling, the feeling, the feeling for you. Something I do by myself, there's no rules, that's a big plus. And something that I do by myself, but yet we call my friends. 
so, you, so know, you, you know, it's, it's an individual, individual thing, thing that the same time, time can vibe, vibe off everyone else and have a lot of fun like that. that. As opposed, as opposed to, like, to, like, team sports, sports where, where, you know, you, know, you, you lose. lose. Like, no one ever, no one ever loses. loses. Like, 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 whoever has, whoever has the most fun wins. wins. I remember I, remember I got my first real board, board for Christmas, you know, like, when I was 12. But before that, I had, like, a Ninja Turtles board, you know, I used to go boarding down the hill and stuff like that, you know. But I, but I, it's always, been always been a part of me. I've always, been always fascinated, fascinated with it. With it. It's, it's really, it's really endless. endless. There's, there's no, no, there's no there's end, no end right, right, you know. So, 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 so it, just, it keeps, it keeps me going. Always, always more to it. Which I'm not, like, not like the gangster, the gang, the kid, the kid, the t-shirt, I'm not rock, rock kid. I'm just like I just skate, you know. You know. Look for me out here. Look for me in the streets of Boston. That's where I'm. That's where you'll see me. Yeah, yeah, So, you know, these people have passion. They have passion for what they do. The question always with the business, uh, so, you know, we have the content and we know what we're doing for content. The biggest challenge has been the money. You know, everybody sort of says, how do you make money? Um, and that's a really good question. That, you know, I was very confident in, in my content making abilities, but uh, the entrepreneur thing has definitely been baptism by fire. And especially in this space where everything is free, um, you know, online media is, is sort of like opening up a store and, and paying the money to hire staff and then saying, take what you want. <laughs> it's all free. <laughs> take the clothes, take the toys, everything. Um, so we really had to sort of go back to the drawing board and figure out how to keep the lights on in a lot of ways. Advertising, I, you know, I'm a little local person, so um, advertising at a local level uh, won't, won't do everything. So we had to be creative and come up with different things. Um, so we started doing events and um, one of the things we did, we have a really cool space in, in Fort Point Channel, a studio, so we started monetizing the studio that we had, and we started producing something called pop-up stores, which I'd read about on the West Coast um, that were really taking off, and so we started producing those once a month and sort of taking an editorial theme and applying it to that, um, and we ran one every month, uh, one month chocolate, the next month yoga, the next month Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, we came up with all kinds of things. The, the good thing about being little is that you don't need to go through a lot of management. You know, we come up with an idea and we can do it, like, next week. Um, so we got a lot of traction from that. That really worked. It, it's nothing I particularly saw myself doing, you know, swiping credit cards uh, a couple of years after I started a magazine. But you know what? It, it worked and it paid the bills. and and. That's what counts, you know. Um, in coordination with that, we also um, produce panel discussions out of our studio as well. That was on manners. You know, how do you be polite in a modern world? Is an email thank you okay? That kind of thing. Um, we produced those once a month for about two years. And then um, something that we've done uh, that really caught on as well is something called red frame coverage. Um, we cover parties. And, uh, you know, I was sort of noticing that as traditional media was having trouble, um, that they were not dispatching photographers the way they used to, to to cover events. And even if they did, you know, that it's only a couple of pictures on a, news, on, on a newspaper, whereas online, you can go down to China, you know. So we started charging for that. And, uh, and so people hire our crews to come and, and cover them. Um, so it's been seven years. Um, as far as the future, um, you know, we are excited about the day that we can roll out nationally into different cities. We'll be excited when that happens. Um, but in the meantime, um, it's, been, it's been great, no matter what happens. And what I would say to anybody um, thinking about starting a business or starting a hobby, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, just, you just do it. The, the, the key word definitely is bold. Um, the people that we've met have changed our lives. Um, and it's not necessarily because of the successes they've had, but a lot of times it's because of the failures that they've had. Um, and they've driven us to keep, to keep trying and keep swinging the bat. And I would say the same thing to you. Um, don't be reckless about it. Do your due diligence, but find a way to do it. Don't let fear get in the way. But our bowl facers haven't. Um, because even if you fail, it's okay. You're, you're going to be just fine. Um, so, you know, I always tell people that, you know, even though we're sort of an editorial magazine and we choose our people in an editorial way, um, you should be your own bowl facer. Because uh, as far as we know, there's only one life. And for us, there's only one way to do it, and it's to be bold. Thank you.